1914, World War I came to Europe. The initial enthusiasm was soon replaced by disillusionment. As modern weaponry began to cut men down the way the side cuts wheat. To protect themselves, the soldiers dug those infamous trenches in places no farther apart than the walls of this room. They were foul, gloomy holes. And there the men huddled, uncertain and afraid. But on Christmas Eve, the holiday spirit was in the air. And in many places, a ceasefire was declared so the men could celebrate. Instead of gunfire, the two sides exchanged volleys of Christmas carols. And then, a miracle happened. Soldiers began to climb out of the trenches. Men who only hours before had been trying to kill each other now met in no man's land. They shook hands, traded cigarettes, smiled. Some of them even played football. The final score was Germany 3, England 2. <laughs> I guess some things really don't change. <laughs> Sadly, the truce would not last, but it left an indelible impression. Contest chair, fellow Toastmasters. The trenches of World War I are now abandoned, but others remain staunchly defended. I'm speaking of the trenches we dig to protect ourselves from failure or disappointment, from rejection or adversity. They are the mental barriers that prevent us from taking chances in life. Too many of us play it too safe, too often. We stick to what's easy. We avoid challenges. We keep our heads down in the trenches and rarely venture out. Now, I'm not suggesting we abandon all judgment and common sense. By all means, wear your seatbelt, take your vitamins, and please, read the instructions. <laughs> but I am saying that if we never take a chance, we miss out on much that life has to offer. We don't speak up at that office meeting for fear of being contradicted. And so we don't distinguish ourselves and don't get that promotion. We don't enter that competition because we don't think we're good enough. And so we never find out how good we really are. We don't invite that person to dinner for fear of being rejected. And so, perhaps, the love of our life passes us by. Are there risks? Of course. As John Kennedy said, there are risks and costs with any plan of action. But they are far less than the long-term risks and costs of comfortable inaction. Kennedy was speaking of nation building, but his words apply equally to the building of a life. And the opportunities to build our lives present themselves every day. As a child, I took swimming lessons. For a long time, I was too afraid to jump off that diving board. Until one day, I forced myself to climb the ladder and edged my way to the end. I plugged my nose and jumped. Two hours later, the lifeguards were pleading with me. Kid, you've jumped off 30 times. We're closing. Go home. <laughs> Years later, at university, I was at a party when suddenly I was hypnotized by the prettiest green eyes I'd ever seen. I was drawn to them like a jewel thief to emeralds. But all too soon, she had to leave. I thought, wait, this can't happen. We just met. I've got to see her again. I've got to ask her out. She says no. My heart was pounding, but I had to try. OK, sure. I'm just going to stay here and drink. I mean, have a drink. I mean, kind of like just, just you want to go out Friday? <laughs> I know what you're thinking. But it worked. That young lady is now my wife. Five years after our wedding, I received a job offer in Europe. But we were in Canada with careers, a house, two small children. Should we give that up? Not the kids, the other things. <laughs> then we thought, what an opportunity. If we don't seize it, we'll always wonder what might have been. The move had its challenges. But that first evening in our new home, with boxes everywhere, we sat in the backyard and watched the setting sun paint the Alps in magnificent hues of pink and lavender. And I thought, 
life can be great. Life can be great even in the face of adversity. That's what my friend Charlene taught me. Charlene was someone who always reached for the stars. Literally, she was an astronomer. <laughs> but she was chained to this earth by a terrible disease, cystic fibrosis. Charlene wanted to do a PhD in astronomy. Doctors told her she only had a few years to live. Forget it, they said. Go have fun. So she did. She went to Yale University and got her PhD. Following her passion was fun, and she wasn't about to let her illness stop her. Charlene went on to have a distinguished career for eight years after graduating. And today, a special class of galaxy she studied is named after her. But Charlene's greatest achievement was her ability to inspire others. Sadly, at the age of 38, she passed away. But her life remains a testament to what we can accomplish when we move forward despite the risks. For those soldiers of World War I, the Christmas truce of 1914 was a miracle. We can all experience miracles, if only we try. Leonardo da Vinci said that God will sell us anything you to make that effort and climb out of whatever trenches you might have dug for yourself. Speak up at that meeting, enter that contest, submit that proposal, apply for that position. Ask that person to dance. In short, venture out into no man's land because that is the place where miracles happen. Contest.